seated. Our uh, secretary is on the way with agendas, so we're going to go through some of the good stuff our Anybody else also invited to come 
at seventy-five dollars for tickets it promises to be a fun evening um, at the Odyssey. Uh, we'll be also we'll be honoring our current board and our past board, and also presenting the Gil Benjamin Citizen Beer. Any questions? I'll leave a few flyers in the back and contact the chamber. Give me questions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carl Peterson. I'm a candidate in next month's election for the board, the LAUSD board, um, District 3. I'm a father of five. I have four kids in the district, one and then one graduated from Granada. Um, two of my children are special needs students, and about two years ago they reached a point where they weren't making progress. So we came up with a plan, we worked with their teacher. We tried to work with the school administrators. Everybody agreed this was a good plan. It could probably work. Unfortunately, they, they also said the district won't allow it. Um, they have a top-down approach, and so they said we can't put it in the IEP. So we had to hire a lawyer. We had to spend two days downtown fighting the bureaucracy, and during that time, I said something has to change. Looked at my wife, said I should run for school board or something, and she said you should. So that's why I'm running. I want to bring accountability to the district. We've seen uh, NYSIS be in implemented this year. It's going to cost $98 million to fix, but even worse, the school district is still flying blind. Um, we've gotten notices about our child not being vaccinated this year. She was vaccinated when she entered the school. They've just lost it. So that concerns me because if measles outbreaks in Los Angeles, we have no way of knowing which kids are vaccinated and which aren't. So I want to bring accountability, and I want to um, give local control to the schools. Um, and if you have, need any information, it's changethelausd.com. Thank you. Let the board know that uh, the 10th annual Citrus Sunday event is scheduled for May 17th. Uh, that's uh, the third Sunday of, of the month. Uh, we already have uh, permission from uh, the school here uh, for a drop-off site. We'll be working with the uh, Key Club, uh, which is the uh, arm of the Kiwanis here on campus. And uh, I'm going to uh, ask, I don't see Jim here yet, I'm going to ask that uh, uh, on the outreach uh, committee uh, and on the regular agenda that the uh, board consider a uh, outlay of $500 uh, for mailing uh, for this event. Uh, that's what we spent last year, and I think it uh, helped boost our, uh, uh, our intake uh, on fresh fruit. For those of you that don't know what Citrus <coughs> Sunday is, uh, we've been doing this now for uh, this will be our 10th year. Uh, we, as neighborhood councils and local organizations, uh, encourage people to bring in fresh fruit. Uh, this is on uh, a specific day of the, of the year, uh, usually in May or, or June. Uh, we also work with Food Forward, which is an organization in the valley that, that harvests fresh fruit year round. And uh, we'll be working with them, they'll be staging picks on Saturday uh, in the North Valley and hopefully here in Granada Hills to help publicize the event and bring up our total. So I just wanted to get that in front of everyone. I'd also like uh, to ask for a volunteer to, uh, to attend the meetings with us. Uh, hopefully somebody from the Outreach Committee, uh, maybe Mike or, or Renee or Jim, uh, whoever might be available. We're meeting on the third Tuesday of the month. And if someone's available and interested in getting involved in this project, uh, I certainly appreciate that a board member checking in on this as well. So uh, you can contact me, I'll have my email, contact me and I'll, I'll send you the details. Thank you very much, have a meeting. Jim, Anybody else? Yes. Ah, Mr. Cusco. <clears throat> uh, 
Hi everyone, I'm Lady Bisman. I'm a stakeholder at the Imperial Um I'm just wondering, do we have any minutes for the table back there? I uh, didn't see any, so if you No, they don't they don't hear the speakers because oh, yeah, I'll pick them up, up when I'm done. Um, also uh, I I'm mentioning this as a public comment. I have sent a couple of emails in asking that the uh, approved minutes for the Granada South Neighborhood Council be posted on the website. There's no approved minutes that have been posted on the website since April of last year. That's over 10 months. I don't understand why there's this delay in getting the approved minutes up onto the website so we can see what's going on. Thank you. Do you have any other public comment? Seeing none, I would like to go back to uh, item three of the approval minutes. Okay, you all want to just have a copy of the minutes? Jim Summers has arrived. We got a student now, so I have a message from Chris now. She says she's still in downtown LA. She's on her way here. So she'll be late. Okay. 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 Further comments on the minutes? Hearing none, I'll put this to a vote. All those in favour? I'm sorry, I need a second. Yes, to approve the minutes. So the, uh, this to approve the minutes would be changed. <coughs> With the amendment made by Jerry. By a second. Favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Yes, one abstention. Ross Turnell, Maroon, Jet, Gina, Renee, Jim. Judgment on who gets to go first. 
All right. I think uh, Ms. Glasson is volunteering off the door for us. Whoop! It's gone. So. <laughs> Okay, that post 2014 with a decrease in crime again. That marks the 10th year in a row that Devonshire has decreased crime compared to the previous year. Good news. The bad news is I personally think that's coming to an end this year. Because uh, first couple of months of the year, we're already seeing a significant increase in crime. And uh, the main factors really, one, under violent crime, is the realignment of the <coughs> aggravated assault policy to match national sta standards, where no longer it's a weapon that could use, that could cause great bodily injury, but it's a weapon that could possibly. So that opens up uh, a whole different category of report. So you're gonna see that. You're gonna see an uh, increase in aggravated assault. And also what we're seeing, the first two months here, is it's an increase in uh, unsecured properties. So people are losing a lot of cell phones, a lot of wallets, a lot of purses, just because those property, those valuables are being left unattended. And we're seeing an increase in that. Also, that applies to vehicles. Middle of the night, <coughs> vehicle break-ins, they're not smashing windows or forcing doors. They're just trying door handles and they're finding a bunch of cars that are unlocked. And then they're ransacking, taking whatever they can from them. So this, this, these three particular elements are making our, our crime uh, peak by, by a lot, not just a little. So we're going to see a challenge with that. Um, we had a burglary cl cluster just two weeks ago in the residential area around Frost. Okay, we deployed resources. A lot of it was unmarked, undercover uh, resources. During the crime spike, we made an arrest uh, in, a, in a nearby area, and uh, it was a multiple uh, arrest, two suspects for burglary. We got them with goods in the trunk. And the minute we arrested them, we saw that spike, that cluster clear. So now we're back to business as usual on the, res on, uh, the residential burglary side. <clears throat> what we saw in the last three nights, and I would ask uh, perhaps to post it on the website or something along the, the line of a, a newsletter or something like that, is the middle of the night commercial burglaries. The windows smashed to the businesses, and then opening the cash register and taking whatever money is in the register. So the word for the businesses will be leave your cash register visibly open, no money in it, and maybe even post something on the window of the actual business that says no money in the register so that they don't go through the trouble of getting the windows smashed. <clears throat> this year will be a good year to push, to push on the startup meetings. And what I mean by that is refresh your neighborhood watch meeting. You're all community leaders just for, by the mere fact that you're so involved. Uh, I left flyers at the entrance, it's got my contact information, my phone number, my email. Please feel free to email me. You pick the date, maybe a month on the road or something, and we'll do a quick neighborhood watch meeting on your block with your immediate residents. That way we can strengthen the prevention aspect and, and clear at least your area from, uh, from any uh, opportunities type of crime, which is what we we'll see a lot of. <clears throat> Next Tuesday will be uh, the neighborhood watch meeting for Granada Hills, Northridge, Port Ranch, my basic car, the combined meeting. That's going to be at St. Euphrasia, 7 p.m. next Tuesday. And then the following mar month in March, we will have a district meeting, which we have two or three every year. And basically, we talk about the state of Devonshire. And then a special guest will be uh, City Attorney Mike Fuhrer and the Neighborhood Prosecutor uh, Attorney Aline Sabine. Thank you very much, Dara. Any Thank questions? You. Dario, this is Bill Corser. Could you talk about what's happening at the Balboa Shopping Center at Mission? Sure. That's a real good thing, I think. Sure. So uh, when, we looked at, when we looked at the commercial areas, we looked at the hot spots for the last, I would say, the last, uh, the last decade, more or less. Uh, the focus was always on San Fernando Mission and Balboa, the Trader Joe's, the Bad Boys parking lot, if you're familiar with it. It just seemed like there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of quality of life issues going on, a lot of the panhandlers, the transients, a lot, a lot of those uh, minor type of crimes that go along with that, that kind of nature. And we realized that there were things that they actually, the property owner could do to improve. And, and basically, we had a meeting with the city attorney, we brought him in, we held him to some kind of conditions and standards to which he agreed, uh, finally, after, after years of uh, trying to force the hand. But the, the end result is that the parking lot is now completely turned around. If you go take a look at it, you know, for the most part, they're, they're looking after the, the petty stuff, which prevents the bigger stuff. You no longer find the panhandlers and 
and the, the drinking in public and all this stuff. So it's little things that we can do sometimes and uh, throughout the battle and then you know clear up an area where it's it returns to being pleasant to shop and and, and food. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <coughs> has there been any reports uh, around the new uh, DMV office in the United Hills about all the, the parking problems uh, that seem to be bothering uh, uh, the, the homeowners as well as the uh, business owners, that shopping center? Uh, the comment from Eric is about the shopping center uh, within uh, San Francisco with the DMV. Honestly, I look at that situation, and a lot of the problem is it's vehicles that are parked, not only the parking lot, which is overflowing the capacity of the parking lot, but it's also on the nearby residential areas to where if you own a home on either San Fernando Mission or Woodley, Monday through Friday, good luck finding a parking spot in front of your house. It's just not happening. There's hundreds of car, cars. And then we look at the posting of the signs, we look at the parking, Actually, there is no violation. There is no parking violation to it at this moment. But really, my question is to go back. Ultimately, there is a person that authorized this location to open. And my question would be to go back to the person and say, were you thinking about the parking effect that it had for the residents around you? Because now, you know, PD is being looked at, parking enforcement is being looked at, neighborhood councils are being looked at, council office is being looked at to resolve the problem which in reality was in the planning stages that in my opinion should have never been allowed to be to begin with because it doesn't have the capacity to handle that kind of flow. Go back to the source, I would say, let's let's see if we can hold this, this person that authorized it to begin with to, to some kind of solution. I don't know what else to say. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, not really a question, just for Eric. United Hills North, the DMV is in United Hills North Neighborhood Council I know, it's right there. Yeah. It's in United Hills North Neighborhood right. Council area. Uh, United Hills North Neighborhood Council uh, has voted, and we're going to try and get a by appointment only for the people who come into the DMV that will limit the amount of cars, and that's the best solution. Thank you very much.
I'm Tanya, the council member in Wonder's office. Um, some updates here really quickly. Uh, Councilman Englander is supporting, uh, actually pushed for a hit and run alert system. And what is, um, he has asked the LAPD, the Department of Transportation, to implement a hit and run mass notification system in the city of Los Angeles to use, using the existing technology platforms that we have, such as like Nixle, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, right now, the statistics with LAPD is <coughs> approximately 20,000 hit and runs each year. Um, all, nearly half of all vehicle crashes in the city are hit runs compared to the national average it's at only at 11 percent so with this system uh, we are trying to make our own system within the city to kind of complement what's working at the state called the yellow alert system so it's something that is brand new um it's going to be uh, in the city um, and it's just it, it, it's again to help us to deter hit runs to catch those people um, and it just promotes safety in general um, in addition, Councilmember Englander is supporting the ban on alcohol advertising on city property and vehicles. Um, so the council did vote unanimously to remove these ads. Um, and with this, you know, we're we're working with um, you know our agency within to identify those locations and remove alcohol advertising from city property. One community event is the community blood drive. It's Battle of the Batches. Um, it's done through the American Red Cross, but this year. Uh, LAFD is hosting it, so the fire department at uh, uh, Fire Station 87, which is um, located at 10124 Balboa Boulevard. It's this Monday coming up, February 9th. And uh, you do need to have your identification, but we hope those who are able, please come. Thank you. Any questions, Thank you. Thank you. on what's going on at some of the local schools and then if you want questions, that's fine. I just came from Patrick Henry Middle School where they had the sixth grade honor roll tonight, um, which was amazing. Uh, so many parents came out to support their kids. It was really a wonderful event. Um, when I left, they were about to start uh, their version of Are You Smarter Than a Sixth Grader? They were pitting the parents against the kids. Um, so I think it was a really nice event for the parents and the kids. Um, as some of you know, um, Henry Middle School recently submitted a proposal for a visual and performing arts magnet on campus. Um, and this will complement the math science technology magnet they already have. It's also going to hopefully be great because Mayall Elementary School, which feeds into Henry, they have an art science magnet proposal that was recently approved. So then, you know, students from Mayall could then matriculate into Henry um, and then hopefully into Voss and then they, they could stick with this arts tech technology theme all the way through. So um, that's actually what um, I've been pushing for on the board is um, instead of having like one great program here and another great program here and one over here, trying to have them so the, the kids who are really interested in a certain topic can actually stay in and matriculate all the way, way through um, in it and works especially if you're gonna do a dual language program or something like that. It's great to have a, a pathway all the way through high school. So that's what's going on at Patrick Henry, at Valley Academy of Arts and Sciences. As you know, they um, won the Aspen Challenge competition um, last spring uh, with an environmental project that has turned into an environmental science class on campus, which is pretty neat. Um, this weekend, they're building planter boxes for their community garden at school. Um, and they're going to be donating the, the food. I know they're, they're working with some of the organizations also involved um, with the citrus donation. And they, they got a grant from Whole Foods to do, do some of this. And my, my favorite part about it is the kids found the grant and wrote it them, themselves. So that was pretty great. Um, and also, Boss is one of the schools in OAUSD participating in the Take Home Tablet program. Uh, so I have been sending every reporter known to humankind who wants to talk about tablets up to Voss. So instead of hearing the board talk about it, they can actually go see a student who's actually using it. And I think at, at last count, they, they've only had three iPads that were accidentally broken and none gone, gone missing. So the, the students feel when you, you talk to them, they, they feel really proud that someone trusted them with this device and they, they can take it home and they're, they're doing really um, a great job with it. The, the teachers are enjoying using it as 
a teaching tool. Um, Granada Elementary School, they just got a free trip to the Chamber Orchestra, um, and uh, they're also using 78 new laptops that they just got. Um, Granada Hills Charter, our host. Um, we found out today that a student here, his name is Christopher Elizondo, is a finalist for the U.S. Presidential Scholars Award. There are only 140 students nationwide who are nominated, and one of them is from here. So that is pretty great. Um, and they're in the middle, Granada's in the middle of open enrollment, so they're still accepting applications. So all your friends, the neighbor, all your friends who want to use your home address to apply here, uh, tell them first, let's try, before we, 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 you know, you have people moving into your garage, um, lottery applications being taken out. You have no idea how many calls I've received in the last two weeks of people, how do I get in there? Uh, Porter Middle School, uh, they have a new principal, Linda Ibach, if you haven't met her, she's recently the principal at Grant High School. Um, they just got 60 desktop computers for their computer labs, and since they have 1,600 students, get getting 60 more computers was great. Um, and Telsa Elementary School, um, they had a day of service last month to beautify the school. It was a great event. And what, one of the really neat things that's go, going on at Tulsa is they worked with some of their neighboring schools, Haskell, Mayall, and Danube, who are all having the parents are concerned about Common Core, don't really know what it is. <coughs> Um, so instead of each school hosting its own event, they also they have joined together. They got some professional development in for the teachers, and they, they did some workshops with the, the parents, and they kind of worked collaboratively on this. Um, and they just got 50 uh, new desktop computers, which is what they wanted. And then last um, last weekend, um, I sponsored a, um, a kind of a technology forum that was put on by a number of the teachers in my board district who've been using technology in new and innovative ways. And the two teachers who um, hosted the breakout session, which is how to build a classroom website, um, were from Tulsa. And um, those of us who are parents who have kids in the district and love good classes with uh, websites, I see a lot of people nodding because then when your child says, I don't have any homework this week, or I don't know when that assignment is due, you can actually go right on and say, really? It says, you know, February 8th, and you should be going doing that right now. So, uh, it, it, and it was one of the best sessions, and there were so many uh, teachers who wanted to, to attend it that we, we did it twice. So, that was pretty great, and uh, that's the only USC update for Granada Hills. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. So, I thought you could call whatever you want. You, you call. Okay. okay. So, the uh, Valley Academy, the uh, uh, to live in that area, and uh, of course there were a lot of residents there that were concerned about it when it came in, and it's it's pleasing that there's been precious few uh, complaints about what's gone on there. The, the traffic has been not nearly what some people had uh, considered that it might be. Uh, the impact's been pretty low. One one issue that has been raised though is that they the, the school has on a couple of occasions had late night events with a, a band and. And the sound, the, the environmental impact report when it came out cited that the school didn't have a stadium and therefore there wouldn't be any any events that wouldn't have noise impacts on the community uh, into the evening. So uh, the, the concern was is, is there an intent for this to continue or is the school aware that they're not supposed to be having events in the evening? Okay. I can find out for you. I know I've been to one of those events, so I, I'll, let me find out for you. Do you post this collection of information on any particular site? Interesting question. Um, we have a we have a news. My my office does a, an electronic newsletter that we send out, and we have a Facebook page and stuff like that. So we usually post kind of um, either upcoming events, positive, good news stories, awards that the schools have won or students have won, kind of those types of things. But other, and then on the website also, if you go to my OUSD website, um, there we also have an interactive map where bond money has been, been spent. So you can pull up, you know, Granada Hills or Boca Specific School and look what what bond what dollars have been spent on shade structures or new benches or new lighting in the multi-purpose room or whatever it was. But other than that, I don't know if we have it. But it's an interesting idea. Well, you often have to write stories for us. <laughs> no, exactly. So the reason why we asked is that we were talking in the outreach committee about posting these things on our Facebook to, to, to 
so what's happening in the community and having better outreach. Why don't I give you and exchange cards with you and then we could email you these stories for Granada Hills and you could post them. Absolutely. Done. Great idea. Awesome. And then as we do, as my office also does things like we, we have a, a budget town hall meeting coming up and those types of things, we'll, we've been sending um, the, the announcements over to all the neighborhood councils hoping they'll post them as well if anyone is interested in hearing about the OUSD budget. A more fascinating topic. Yes, sir. And you mentioned that there were about 79 uh, <coughs> iPads missing? Or? No, there were three that were broken. Broken. And that were dropped. 80, 80 computers that were missing or something like that? I said that we that schools got computers, so some we, we have a, a number of schools in this in this area have asked for either laptops or tablets or projectors or desktops for a computer labs. So we've been trying to get them um, what they need. How does the school district identify a specific computer? That's a really if good question. Stolen, yeah, that's a really good what, question. What solutions can you? Suggest. So we did a whole bunch um, uh, when we first started rolling out kind of both laptops and, and tablets because that was that exactly was our worry. So we, we've done a few things. There's um, tracking devices in them, so they, they get scanned, so there's inventory control, but also um, we can ro remotely shut down the device when it leaves campus. It's an electronic data point when if someone has the computer off site. If it's not supposed to be, or if they report it missing, or if we notice that it's, you know, all of a sudden down, you know, in San Diego or something, and it's not supposed to be, we can remotely shut it off and it becomes worthless. So it's a, a doorstop. And have you We've also worked it? with LAPD in order to have kind of um, like safe houses. So they're, they're, if, if someone finds one and, or takes it and gets shut off and wants to drop it back, no, no questions uh, asked. LAPD is working with us on, on on that as well. We had a whole bunch of meetings uh, before we rolled this out between school police and LAPD and the sheriff's department and some IT security experts to, to try to roll this out um, as responsibly as, as we could. So thank you, it's a good question. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. The record reflect, Mr. Schimmel. <laughs> All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have some great uh, speakers tonight. We have one other bit of uh, board issues and updates. This is item six, and I'm just going to take the lead on this. As everybody knows, we have two open seats, community organizations and paid face. We've been asking for applicants, some people interested, for some time. Uh, we have, uh, I got my second applicant for the community organizations seat this evening, so we'll be coming back at that one probably next month. But it's, uh, I'd like to speak to item 1B, 61B. This is a faith-based seat. We have a applicant, Mr. Mark Morris. Mark, please stand up. Okay. Mr. Morris, uh, if uh, approved, would be filling the seat that's been vacant since 2014 and if appointed would serve a term until the end of the current Dunn Region 2 council term, which is presumably 2016, given the challenges the city's had with elections in the past. Might or might not happen, but presumably it's 2016. Uh, Mr. Morris is a 13-year resident of Granada Hills and is or has been affiliated with the Granada Hills Church of Local Science, the Valley Interfaith Council, including currently serving on the council's board. The Social Concerns Committee of the Sepulveda Unitarian Universalist Church, which is in North Hills, just to the east of us, and the Southern California Parliament of World Religion. Mr. Morris comes with excellent references from Rabbi Jonathan Klein, who is a former Granada Hills resident who is affiliated with Temple Ahabat Shalom, in Northridge, and if I came close to that, please give me some points. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Klein knows Mr. Morris through their volunteer, their volunteer work. He's also highly recommended by Ms. Carol Hart, who is both chair of the Valley Interfaith Council Social Concerns Committee and a fellow neighborhood council person. She's the secretary of North Hills West. So having said that, and I run this through Don and City Attorney, and they've given me the following procedure. Uh, with that as a motion, I will now ask for public comment on this appointment, or potential appointment. 
Do we have any public comment? <laughs> Well, well, we'll get to that. Okay. Any public comment? Seeing none. Public comment. Well, public comment. Ask some questions. We can ask some questions. <coughs> Seeing none. Okay, Mr. Morris is invited to present his qualifications. Understand that any further action will require a motion. Said motion will require a second and a vote. And if the, that vote goes forward, and if appropriate, the oath of office will be administered by the president. Mr. Morris, please, please present your qualifications. I um, thank you for your introduction. Oh, yeah. I, oh sure. I, uh, wow, uh, thank you for your introduction. Um, everything you said was true. <laughs> 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 <Don't start. laughs> and um, I'm already participating in a, in a lot of interfaith activities in the area, and I'm familiar with uh, many of the, the faith communities in this area, uh, either participating in some of the ceremonies or speaking with them at uh, different functions. And, and I'm really looking forward to participating with the Neighborhood Council, with the other board members, and also in, in the uh, different committees. And uh, however I can uh, you know, contribute to the other committees, and especially as late as on to the to the faith community here in our district. And I uh, I plan on being at the uh, Citrus Sunday planning meeting because you know, with Valley Interfaith Council I'm very familiar with the uh, food pantry's benefit from uh, Citrus Sunday. But first hand I know about that. So anyway I hope uh, I didn't prepare anything and I, I, I also I want to thank Kanye West. All right. So, <laughs> any questions? No, any questions? Any questions? I have two questions for sure. you. First off, why do you want this position? Uh, well, number one, because uh, you're in need of one. <laughs> you're in need of a representative. I'm doing it anyway. You know, I, I, I participate in, in uh, lots of different interfaith activities anyway. And it's just, I. Uh, on a personal note, my son grew up, moved out. Uh, I got a little more time on my hand than and so than I used to, and I would really like to participate with this board. And I've been to quite a few board meetings, and, and I like the sandwiches. <laughs> my, my second question is, uh, what interactions have you had with the Jewish community, the Muslim community, and the Hindu community around the world? Well, the Hindu community, community uh, uh, members here in Granada Hills, by way, not necessarily because I, I, I know as far as any type of Hindu shrines or any type of uh, um, ashram uh, type of uh, facilities, or um, uh, again, you know, like in, in the Buddhist community, with, uh, actually I, I, I practice so as in Buddhism, and, and uh, in the Buddhist community, there's, uh, there are sanghas, but which are communities. But as far as actual real estate property locations, uh, there, is, there is the North Ridge Islamic Center. But I don't believe there's, is there an Islamic Center here in the district? It's actually just over the line in Granada Hills North. Oh, great, okay, cool. And, but I have participated in activities by way of the uh, um, Parliament of World Religions. As a matter of fact, we're putting something together at uh, Royal Marymount. Uh, in March, and uh, with the uh, Islamic community, they, they, uh, uh, it actually was in Culver City, at a, at a uh, mosque in Culver City, but there were participants from our area. So yeah, I did that. And as far as the, as far as the Jewish community, uh, once a month, I, I go to Temple Hillel in uh, North Hollywood to help them bag uh, food. And uh, I participated a lot with different entities here in the area. And actually, that's one of my main things. Once it becomes, uh, you know, once I, if I, I uh, am, am a board member and, and get this position, one of my very first things I plan to do is visit each one of the, uh, um, you know, temple facilities or 
uh, churches uh, and pastors and athletes and invite them <coughs> to uh, our meetings and also find out what their activities are that are contributing to the to the community and bring that back to the Thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I would like to ask for a motion. I will make a motion. Second. Second. Made by uh, Mr. Matthews and seconded by Mr. Tremell. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, all those in favor of the the motion is to the motion is basically to accept it. To yeah, I'll, you know, I'll actually read off what they told me. So the motion is to appoint Mr. Morris to the faith-based seat with a term ending in 2016 and the finding that he satisfies the eligibility requirements for the seat based on his involvement in uh, faith-based and interfaith organizations that serve for non-adults. So if we have that made and seconded, so move. Right. Mr. Secretary. Oh. Is that your motion? That is my motion. Excellent. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions. All right. Well, all right. Just so everyone knows, um, I was the one who contacted the references. They had nothing but good things to say about Mark. And I met with them and talked to them, and I was very impressed. So this is the next thing I get to do. Uh, please raise your right hand. I state your name. I'm Mark. Pledge to represent my neighborhood. Pledge to represent my neighborhood. With dignity, integrity, and pride. With dignity, integrity, and pride. I will encourage other points of view. I will encourage other points of view. Even when they differ from my own. Even